Hello everyone. Um, we're going to talk uh, today about the idea of how to lay out the drawing uh, from life observation, um, particularly in this case um, a view of the inside of your room, uh, a larger space. Now we did an invented drawing of an inside room, corner of the room, in two-point perspective and I want this drawing to kind of echo that in terms of two-point perspective. Except in this case you're going to be approximating angles and um, doing visual measurement to really figure out the specifics of, uh, of the walls and tables and whatever you happen to be looking at. I'd like you to include, if possible, um, part of the ceiling of the corner of the room and the floor of the corner of the room so we get a kind of a uh, larger picture. Um, now the, the question is how much do you include uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the drawing? So um, what you do is you got to think about framing you know, cropping of the drawing. One technique to do, to use, might be to use your uh, cell phone, um, the screen on your cell phone, and turn the camera on. Don't take a picture because I want you to draw from from uh, real life, but it'll give you a way to kind of figure out how much you want to include in the drawing. Um, in the upper left-hand corner here, I did a um, a drawing of, uh, or I did a. Um, You'll see a video of me kind of approximating angles. There's a kind of corner of my living room area. Um, so the camera kind of does it for me there, right? But you can kind of see um, I could crop it in, uh, you know, so I kind of close that box in. In this case, it would be, um, you know, much uh, kind of smaller. I just barely see the ceiling there. So how much you include in the drawing is really important here. Um, I did this uh, prior to, uh, you know, I did this little demonstration. I'm kind of doing a voiceover on it, so I'll kind of maybe skip through a little bit of it here. So, um, but one one issue might be, as you can kind of see there, I'm pointing out the um, the crop is smaller than I started with, uh, and um, so I have a video here in the upper left corner of me just kind of looking into the corner of my room and doing visual measurement. Um, so I'm going to put. Um, you know the drawing on the right hand side and I did a couple of experiments here uh, um, of how to, how I would lay this composition out right this reduced uh, cropped in uh, view um, you know some things to think about here when when doing that um, so for instance the um, you know the corner of the room where, where would that be you know uh, in in the crop um, so you see those ceiling lines there. There's a line for the um, line for the window. You know, just kind of laying it out. Of course, the windows come all the way over here, right? You know, and there's the windows that we're facing more directly. So you can see just this little sliver up here, right? Uh, of I don't see the floor at all in this scenario. Or so this table where the lamp and plants are setting, uh, pushing down towards the bottom of the composition. So I'm cropped in. So in this version, we don't see any of the floor. There's a coffee table in front of the couch. We don't see that. So that might be a way to uh, think about cropping the scene. So you can kind of move your cam camera around as you view it, uh, your phone, and think about how much. Now the phone, you know, the dimensions, the proportions of the window of the phone, you know, the picture of the phone, will not be exactly the same as your uh, composition, but you can get a, a you know, the 18 by 24 sheet of paper, but you can get a sense of it. Now in this view, uh, a little bit less of the ceiling, right? Uh, kind of move the crop down and to the left a little bit. So I see more of, of the table, coffee table down here. Um, the, uh, the, the corner, I see less of these windows, so I push the corner to the right a little bit more, as you can kind of see over here, way, way more space on this wall. I'll use the pointer here than this wall. Uh, so there's the couch, you know, back of the couch. So a whole different kind of gestalt going on there, right? You know, the, the way you divide the picture plane up is important uh, in a drawing. So you got to think about that in drawing class. It's a compositional issue, but uh, when you make a drawing, you have no choice but to think about positioning of things in space, right? In this case, the space is the flatness of the picture plane. So how you divide those spaces up. Uh, that creates the composition and that creates the framing, you know, the cropping of the drawing. Um, so there's that view. Um, of course, the lamp. You see, I'm kind of 
I can do everything with a straight edge. I'll talk about that in a little bit. You know, just you do that to the begin with in the drawing because remember, you have two strong, three really strong forces in the drawing: the two verticals sides of the drawing and two horizontals, the bottom and top of the drawing, and then that that magical 45 in between the two, right? So using the straight edge to block in the drawing, which is what I'm going to want you to do with the, the drawing. Um, is really important because you respond to angles, you know, and you're just kind of, it's kind of design, right, in a certain way. So there I opened it back up to, um, uh, to the full view, okay? So we'll get started now. Now um, what I'm doing here is um, lining my, like we talked about angle approximation we did with this book. So what would the angle be at the top of those windows, for instance? It's not horizontal, uh, so if I were to strike a line on my composition, I need to think about what that angle would be. You know, it's a, just a subtle, there's horizontal, right? Just a little bit tilted down a little bit, right? Just a little bit off a of horizontal. Now, your head's going to play tricks with you, I'm going to warn you, because you know those windows are horizontal to the floor, right? So you would might just miss that subtle angle. Right? Because uh, your brain's saying uh, horizontal, 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 so you just pop in horizontal, and then the whole drawing would start to, you know, misfire because of that. Um, so as I said, put two or three lines in. You don't know right where, you know, it creates an ambiguity in the drawing that's important. Um, it gives you flexibility in the drawing if you're not relying on just one line for one particular edge of anything, okay? Um, <clears throat> So the next decision, <coughs> excuse me, I need to make is to figure out <coughs> where the corner of the room is, you know, and that's a vertical. All, ver all vertical lines are just that, absolutely vertical. So I can kind of just stretch up a, uh, and I notice I made those too long, right? So I'm kind of racing those away a little bit, um, the window lines, right? So I, now I have two relationships going, got those top of the window to the corner of the room, okay? So uh, now the top of the wall, right? What angle is that? Now we know because of perspective that's going to be a little more angular than the top of the windows, even though they're parallel in reality. So as I strike that edge, again, you're laying your ruler down on the paper, right? And that goes all the way to the corner of the drawing that you can kind of see. It goes right off the edge of the drawing. So there's where your phone, if you can get your phone back up there to frame the drawing, you would see that. Otherwise, just let the chips fall where they may. You know, you'll, you, you'll be able to figure out uh, eventually as you start to develop the drawing and do your visual measurement. You know, what's you know what fits in the drawing will fit in the drawing. You know, you're not. It's not. You can't be a hundred percent sure, but it just gives you a start in terms of this idea of scale. You know, and um, uh, fitting um, things into the drawing. Now, there's the angle for the right wall. Now, we'll talk at, about at the end of the process here why that angle is a little more vertical, right? That right wall where that uh, that I'm holding my pencil up to on the left there now, uh, a little more vertical. Not Still not 45 degrees, but it's not as horizontal as the uh, wall that I'm facing directly there, the one with the two windows. Um, so those angles are real subtle. Notice how I'm laying th two, three lines down just to start to indicate those transitions between planes, right? Right wall, ceiling, left wall, ceiling, top of door, or I'm sorry, top of um, window. Now maybe the next thing is, well, the top, what's the angle of the top of those windows? Notice that the horizon line is probably even with those uh, ties on the, on the drapery there, okay? So my next decision is to kind of figure out what the top of that wall is over on the drawing, or the top of those windows over the drawing. Now, where they go into the corner of the room, they're at the same height, you know, as these windows. But these windows um, will be the difference, you know, look at the difference between the, the space between the top of the wall and those windows I just uh, created the angle of. It gets bigger as it moves towards us, right? And it gets smaller as it moves towards the corner of the room. That, so that negative space between the top of those windows and the ceiling, you got to consider when you, when you do those angles. So the next thing I'm going to kind of maybe think about where that table comes into into play. I think that's what I deal with next here. Um, let's see. I'm going to drop down those verticals first in terms of the, the size of the windows. Just to start to get a sense of that rectangular shape that are those two windows there. Um, 
So that gives me a starting point for where the corner of the, you know, kind of just, I don't know wholly where the um, uh, bottom of the, that right edge of the windows is, but I'm kind of just guessing. So it kind of gives me an idea of maybe where that table will start. And then I can strike that angle in, okay? So see, I'm holding my pencil up to guesstimate that angle. So the next thing would be how to draw, you know, the end of the table you're going to make it longer than it actually is. But look, look, there, see where that space, the, the division between the first and second window on that right window set? Um, I've got to find that, and that'll give me a point of reference. So I'm going to kind of lay in the left side of the, that window set. You know, that's the whole window set, right? So then I'm going to subdivide, knowing that those windows are equal in reality, but the one closest to me is a little bigger, right? So I'm just kind of kind of subdivide those windows. And I noted that if I dropped a line straight down from that middle set right here, right there, if I dropped a line straight down, it gave me the corner of the table. So all I need to do is pr project that down where that intersects this angle, gives me where the table stops, okay? So you can use other references in the drawing as points of reference to figure out where the location of the new thing is. In this case, this right here going straight down in my field of view over there, I knew that where this angle of the table and that intersected one another was the corner of my table. Then I could strike this its opposite edge you know, going back to the wall and that gives me a sense of that tabletop, really foreshortened, right? So I'm kind of carved this side of the drawing out, starting to get a sense of the layout there. So I go, now it's, this is a good lesson, go to the other side of the drawing, start to think about relationships across the space. That's really important. So I kind of was happy with this. I wasn't finishing every detail. You know, you're going to want to go in and draw every flower petal and every, you know, no, no, you, you got to figure out where everything, kind of the space where everything lives in your drawing first. So. I went to the corner of my composition, you know, kind of imagining, two arrows moving around here, but kind of where this table is and then kind of where that thing, just kind of seeing the space there between the two. So the next question is how far over does the table go here, right? How far over do I take that? That's what I'm pointing to right there. Now I'm looking at a relationship between this window right here in the table and it's almost on a straight line down so if I took this going straight down and moved over a little bit straight down look at the video up here on the left and moved over that gives me the corner of the table right there just like I did the other one so now I go back and establish this right find the middle right this bar right here this middle now I can drop a plumb line down from there and move over and I know the corner of the table is going to be somewhere right in here just because when I related those two points across space, I got a slight little angle to the left here of the pencil. Okay. So I'm going from the known, which is this, to the unknown, which is where that table ends. See that little angle I popped in there? So here was the known. I, I lined my pencil up with that point to figure out where the table is. So I just struck a little angle right there that gave me the point of the table. So that's called a point-to-point -point relationship on angle across a particular view of something, okay? So that now I have the uh, top of the coffee table figured out. So you can kind of start to see how I'm composing this drawing, right? Just with these brief straight edge marks that are subdividing the composition up. Remember, you got to draw what you see and not what you know. Your, your knowledge of that scene is much more different than what your eye is telling you, you know, for any room, you know, that you happen to be living in or, or knowing. So the real trick is to kind of allow your eye to do the work, and that so that's about angle approximation and visual measurement. So I'm just kind of blocking in that kind of speaker down there, you know, a little speaker set on the floor and this is stereo equipment here. I'm not going to go into any of that stuff, right, because we're just talking about how to block in or um, create the the layout, you know, of, of the drawing. So 
they'll always check an angle. I know that those are absolute vertical, so you know those are those are fine. You know, next thing is like how maybe I think I do it. How tall? I'm just checking now, doing a length to width sort of thing. So, the corner of the room, oh those those angles. I think the next thing I do is I go in and I measure the the distance of the corner of the room. So yeah, so from the tabletop up to the corner. So I'm using the table and then just going right up the corner of the room. I'm forgetting the lamp is there. See, I haven't even drawn the lamp right yet. I'm drawing what I know, not what I see. If I, that might be the first thing you draw. And I get that fitting across that upper left uh, margin of the top of the wall. One in about, um, uh, I don't know, a third times. So this dimension right here, boom, 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 right there. See that? I'm showing with the red line. I got fit up the length of this passage one in about a third times or a half times, something like that. Okay, so you can see how visual measurement, what you do in real life, figuring that out, and that works. You know that my drawing is reflecting that. It's just a way to double check your drawing to make sure things are okay. As I said, I'm forgetting that lamp right now, you know, I mean, I don't know when I draw that in, but that's kind of for me, a, I got to get the whole thing laid out before I can kind of get to adding, you know, those sorts of things. So, here I'm just kind of doubling that again, double checking that again, it's about one and a half. So the next thing is how wide is that set of windows right there, maybe, you know, that's something to think about. So what I'm doing here, with my, remember I'm keeping the pencil flat to my body. And I'm measuring the width of that window set right there. Fits in the height of that window set. One with a little extra. See the little extra right there? So I go to my drawing. And there's the width. And there's the height. So I'll just double check and see if my uh, assumptions were correct. And they're pretty good, right? Now this is not the end of the story over here, right? I even haven't finished drawing the vertical, uh, all the vertical, but I'm starting to get a sense of the width. This is why it's really nice to kind of use your straight edge as a sketching tool. Where you're just kind of gently blocking in uh, relationships, you know, P making notes to yourself at the beginning of the drawing. You know, how far over is this thing, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Now I'm not drawing the corner of the window there, obviously. You know, I could, but, you know, the couch is in the way. So, um, so I'm going to talk a little bit now. I haven't put it in, but now I'm, you know, we see those two ribbons that are holding the curtains together. Remember we said how they're kind of straight across from each other? And so is the other one on the other side. Looks a little higher, but not much. So that gives us the indication that's about eye level for the camera in this case, or, you know, me when I positioned the camera, I was in a standing position. So there's the horizon line relative to the scene. And how do I know that? Because objects on this wall line up with objects on this wall. Right, same height. Right, so that they all line up at eye level. Right, so that tells me that that's the um, that tells me that, that is the uh, the horizon line. Now the horizon line isn't kind of in the scene, right? But it's a, an imaginary uh, construct uh, that's that um, corresponds to my eye level relative to the scene. Right, and I know somewhere along there, way outside of the scene in this case. So we'll talk about that later. Um, well, the vanishing points would be the two vanishing points that everything in this drawing would conform to. Um, we'll th talk a little bit of why, later why you won't see those in the drawing. But have, knowing that eye level helps you understand angle here, right? So I understand that this angle is going down as it moves to the right, whereas its partner down here goes up as it moves to the right, right? So this is another reason why understanding perspective is really important. What I'm doing here, I think I'm just kind of, well, I'm measuring the whole distance from the edge of the drawing or my viewpoint to the corner of the room. See that? And kind of relating it to the whole height. You know, I can't see the corner down here where the floor is behind this table. But I'm kind of relating this whole unit to this height of the of the room. Okay. Um, so I'm moving from there and then. I'm imagining the corner of the room down here somewhere, just dropping in 
below that window sill right there. In fact, I might draw it here. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'll probably draw that in. So I don't even see it going behind here. I see a little bit down there right around the couch, right, right, right between the couch and all that stereo equipment. And I know that that is going to be um, at an angle. So now I can, you know, with, I don't even see that line there, but I can start to map out this whole wall without even seeing it. Because I know I see the floor here, take it over where it intersects here, gives me that angle, and voila, I'm kind of seeing behind that table with all the stereo equipment. It's a really good lesson. Now I'm going to kind of figure out, I think I'm going to figure out the spacing between the window and the, um, where the other window starts. So what I'm doing now is trying to figure out uh, whether I have enough space between these two windows. Uh, so what I did is document just as much as I see over here, right, of that kind of window coming in off the edge of the composition. And um, it seems to be pretty good. You know, what I could do, I think I do it here, but I'm not sure. Um, I think I did it already. It was just, just to figure out the width of this and relate it to the width of the space between the windows. You can look at the arrow up there. So now I'm just kind of locking in the couch area here, you know, just general block in. No detail, no nothing. This is, I'm using, if I were doing this with a ruler on a real piece of paper, I'd just be taking that ruler and putting, putting straight lines down to kind of indicate position of things. Um, so, um, you know, that's kind of, you know, all you're doing here at the beginning of this drawing. Um, so now that I'm happy with that space between, you know, I can have this oval tool and I can kind of just pop that window into that space. But I got to think about the space below the wind or below the mirror. I'm sorry, pop the mirror in. The, I keep calling it a window. What is a window kind of? Um, the space below the mirror versus the space above it. A lot more space above. Now, if you're drawing this, you might have put that mirror right in the, between the two, right? You know, so you have equal distance between the couch and the mirror and the, and the ceiling and the mirror and the top of the mirror. Uh, and that's not the case, right? There's a lot more distance between the top um, of the mirror and the ceiling than between the bottom of the mirror and the couch. So um, now I'll maybe pop that lamp in there, I think, you know, just, you know, is this kind of, you know, figure out that space, how much space, you know, it's a, I made it just a tad bit high maybe on the drawing. So that space here maybe is a little longer, this negative space between the top of the lamp and where these two so I could have moved it down a little bit, but that's okay. You know, it's generally in a good place. And then the lamp just drops vertically, right? You know, the, to the um, to the tabletop there. And then you could kind of go in and kind of do all that stuff. I could even pop in. I think I do. Yeah, kind of just that little platter there. You can't really see it, but it's like a ceramics platter. Ceramic platter. It's kind of at a skewed angle, so it kind of occupies that amount of space. So you can see the top of that is pretty pretty good place relative to where that. A ribbon is that holds the curtain together, you know, looking at the spaces between this. So it's just a, it, all it is is a mapping out of spaces, right? And you're using these straight lines as a, um, as a way to, you know, the positioning of them and their angle and everything else as a way to create these spaces between the lines, right? You have no choice. It's a flat sheet of paper, right? So I, I think you got to get out of your, your mind the idea of that you're kind of drawing into space. All you're doing is subdividing uh, the paper with a series of marks <clears throat> that when done correctly um, at the right angle, the right, right length, and the right position on the paper will create this lock together, this series of pieces of a puzzle that will look like uh, reality, even though it's a flat sheet of paper. Okay, um, That's the dilemma. You're transposing three-dimensional world onto a two-dimensional plane, but wanting, to, wanting it to make, make it look three-dimensional. Now I'm just kind of filling stuff in here a little bit and just, um, um, you know, <clears throat> fleshing it out a little bit. I really don't want you to do too much shadowing on this drawing. You could do more because um, we'll get into that next drawing. Uh, do work more on, um, uh, you know, kind of refining those edges as, as you go uh, in the drawing. One thing that I do, and I think I do it here, is I'll, I'll kind of 
smudge or smear a little bit. So you could do this on your drawing at this point. You know, nothing's locked into place. It's just a kind of rough estimation of angle and proportion and, you know, length to width of objects, relationship of size of objects across the picture plane. Like, I didn't do it, but how big is that lampshade versus the mirror? I could measure that. You know, there's a lot to measure in a drawing, a lot to kind of keep track of. And you could thousands, literally thousands of relationships in a drawing. Um, uh, what I do at this point in the drawing is kind of just take my hand and kind of rub over the whole thing maybe and kind of mush stuff together, just soften stuff a little bit. Um, and I, I, I do that with the blend tool here. Um, well, it's a technique we'll kind of play around with next, next, uh, yeah, we'll move into, a, uh, uh, dealing with cross hatching next drawing. Um, so, but I kind of like it because it, it starts to become a subtractive, which we're going to start to get into more of that in our drawing, uh, this idea of, um, um, adding and subtracting to a drawing, you know. We, we've talked about it, subtracting so much. It's, it's a it's a it's a correction. You know, particularly lines and a particular lines not in the right place or something. Uh, it's a way to um, kind of change the position of that line or the angle of that line or whatever. But in this case, it, what I'm doing is kind of smudging the drawing up just a little bit, just to kind of uh, soften things. You know, to give a little bit of a. You don't need to do this on your drawing, but I'm, I took the opportunity here just to kind of. I'll do that just to show you um, how it kind of softens the thing up a little bit in terms of um, the overall effect, right? So it almost kind of becomes atmospheric. So what was kind of these really hard edges now that I worked, labored over to kind of get in the right place, you know, in terms of documenting the spaces of the drawing, the composition, the layout of the drawing. Um, now you know, the framing of the drawing, right? The structure of the drawing. Now I've kind of pushed those away a little bit. So that gives me latitude to come in and redraw, right? Now, and particularly with the eraser. So what I teach the students is to use their straight edge still, but then use the eraser and start to chop away at things. So I can kind of now start to clean edges up a bit by erasing against an edge. So I would lay the ruler down. We'll talk more about that. Like right there, the ruler would be covering up the molding of the window and now covering the ruler covering up the lampshade and then just race right up to the edge of the ruler and you can kind of get really nice edges that way it's like painting almost right so you could do this in your drawing you know as you go uh, once you get everything lined up you can kind of use your straight edge you know and your eraser to clean up edges of things okay so it's not all additive I guess is my point here in terms of just I'm not going to do much here, but just to show you how you can quickly start to transition these chopped in lines. And the, the chopping these lines in should take you a good long while. It's a, it's a complicated process. And then the refinement of them, uh, not to mention the detail. There's really no detail in this drawing yet, right? I haven't done anything that would be considered detail. And that might be a lesson for you, right? Because we're so good at looking at details, and this is how we survive as a species, right? But are we good at seeing the big picture, the overall picture, right? Um, and we're not, probably, you know, I don't know. Otherwise, we would, probably wouldn't be worrying about killing the world with uh, petrochemicals, right? We would have seen the big picture earlier on. Um, so, but we're good at knowing, you know, what I need right now, right? Which is a detail-oriented thing. So. Um, so drawing kind of teaches you those, those uh, seeing the forest through the tree lessons, right? So, um, okay, so there's, um, obviously, these, um, last thing I saved was something I was doing for Stephanie there. So this is my room. I'm going to save that. I'm going to talk just briefly about this idea of um, positioning, okay? Because I talked a little bit about it, of why one wall seems to be coming at us with a little bit more drama than um, um, than another wall. For instance, the right wall where I was, uh, as I was in the room, was a little more angular, right, as it came at us than the left wall, the wall. But I was still looking in the corner of the room, okay? Um, so I'm going to do a couple scenarios here of 
it has to do with your position relative to the walls, right? So in our made up drawing, our invented room drawing, our position relative to the corner of the room was kind of equal. We had our vanishing points, generally speaking, equal distance apart out on, out away from the drawing, of course, right? But uh, so that kind of gave us a consistent angle for the most part. It was a little different in some people's drawings of the right wall versus the left wall, right? So there's the, um, there's the corner of the room, just like our made up drawing. Now in this scenario, see how angular those are, okay? That means that as I draw this drawing, I'm closer to the right wall than I am to the left wall. So those, that right wall becomes more foreshortened and those, the bottom and top of the right wall get more angular on the drawing, okay? So if I was going to a vanishing point, I'll just show you here real quick how that would work. Um, I'm trying to get a little darker marker here. So that line would go to the vanishing point on the right and that line, and they would meet somewhere on that horizon line, right? So the left wall conforming, and this happens in real life. This is kind of generally almost about what I was drawing, seeing what I, seeing I was drawing, right? So the, le the wall on my, the left wall on my drawing, where those windows are over here, that wall would go to a vanishing point and be way off the edge of the drawing. So too, the top and bottom of those windows here and here would conform to the same vanishing point over here. Now the right wall, because I'm closer to it, is more skewed, right? It's much more dramatic. That vanishing point would live behind this wall, okay? See how close it is to the corner of the room, right? Now it's way in the distance, it's in infinity, but my point is that it's on the within my realm of view, right? Because I'm moving over closer to this right wall, that foreshortens the right wall and these angles get a lot steeper. Now let's do another scenario where I'm even closer to the right wall. So let's pretend I moved even closer to the right wall here. And you can see this when you're in your own room moving around, if you're do, doing your angle approximation. If I were in a room, the, in all, in, like literally leaning against the right wall, that's how vertical, if not more, the, the top and bottom of that right wall would be. The left wall would still go to a vanishing point way far away, but really far away now. But the right wall, is van you know, and there's a window, you know, it's kind of drawing a window in the space. So you can kind of see, as I project those into infinity there, it's behind the right wall, or I'm sorry, behind the left wall, but way far away. Whereas, you know, I'm just kind of putting a window in there, those lines would conform, you know, the top and bottom of the window, everything would conform to the vanishing point that is way off. It's even moved further off. Why? Because th that, those lines have become flatter. I'm almost looking straight on at that left wall now. So the top and bottom of the left wall, those lines almost are horizontal, not quite. Still a two-point scheme. I could do a one-point scheme, but this is still a little bit, I still want to kind of play with two-point. Okay, so that's why those lines uh, on the uh, right-hand side of my drawing got were more angular, that wall on the right-hand side, than the left-hand side, because I was positioned in space closer to it. I'm going to do a little bird's-eye view here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So there I am. Here's the corner of my room. So there's the right wall, and there's the left wall. So spatially, I'm much closer to the right wall my body, right, as than I am the left wall. But I'm still turned looking into the corner of the room. That's why it's a two-point scheme. By the way, if it's a one-point scheme, I would turn my body and look straight on to the, the that uh, 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 left wall, right, the wall that's further away from me. Then it would all shift to a one-point scheme because I'd be staring at a plane directly, okay? Here, not so much. I'm still looking into the corner of the room. It just so happens I'm closer to the right wall than I am the left wall. Okay, so the right wall um, by default then becomes, so there's where the couch was, right? There's another, you know, window or the mirror. There's the other table where the stereo equipment was. So you can kind of see, I'm back further in space than that, but, uh, um, but essentially that's the angle of view to the corner and that's how close I was to the right wall versus the left wall. And you can kind of get a sense of that, right? My, the point of view of the camera here or me. Um, kind of reveals that now. So that right wall is more angled. Look at the top of that right wall. Look how much more of an angle that is than uh, the top of the left wall. See that angle versus that angle, a lot flatter. 
that gives you a, a, a sense of position in space. As I, I did in the illustration, if I went even out further over to the right wall, you know, those lines would have got even steeper. The top, that top of the right wall line would have got even steeper. Okay, and then the left wall would have flattened out even more. So uh, you'll see this in, if you move around the space and kind of experiment with things um, as you do. Um, the the the, the two-point scheme that we f first did uh, conforms to this notion, okay, of um, of angularity, right? So if I could track the angles of the tops and bottoms of all these walls out past the composition itself, I would be able to find the vanishing points for every horizontal line in that drawing, both the left left vanishing point, ones that conform to the left vanishing points, and ones that conform to the right vanishing points. It's just that their position changed based on my position in the in the room. Like I say, if I'm closer to the right wall, then the left the the, the vanishing point for that would be. Um, closer to the midline, you know, the corner of the room, as I did uh, showed you in the illustration there a second ago. Okay, I think that's about it. I don't, yep, I think I'm done. So um, we will talk later. Bye-bye.